Watching the world burn, watching the world burn. October 13th, video number two of the day. Anyway, this is what I call the tough hike. This, your feet sink about two or three inches on every step. So you can see how fast I'm moving. But I got some more medical advice for you. So uh, we, the, uh, the, 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 there's a doctor I trust on the radio, and he was talking about cataracts and uh, other eye conditions. I'm not sure if it helps with glaucoma, which is what I have. And uh, he was saying that there's a product out called IC Eye Drops. I'll look into it when I get home. And uh, he says that they're outstanding for cataracts. In fact, they've been known to reverse the condition. So if you've got cataracts, that might be something you just want to look into. Like I say, this is not medical advice, but this is just uh, something that I'm going to look into. And, uh, you know, maybe it might, might work for you. You know, talk to your doctor, see what they have to say. The next thing I wanted to point out to you is we've got Medicare open enrollment season coming up October 15th. I think till November 2nd, 7th, all right? Now, I usually have been in the past just sticking with my Medicare plan because I get a lot of my health care at the VA, which covers my prescriptions for the most part. Some of them you can't get at the VA. But so far, you know, it's done pretty good by me. Anyway, so, uh, so you're going to have to analyze your personal situation. Now, one of the things they said, you know how you, I don't know about you, I am always getting a, a flyer in the mail, you know, come to thus and such hotel for a free lunch and we will discuss this, that, and the other. So that might be a way you could learn about your Medicare plans that are available because they're going to be giving all kinds of free seminars here coming up. Now, I understand they're, they're selling you their product, so you're just getting a piece of information. And, of course, you're going to have to go online and do a lot of reading. But one of the things I want to point out to you is the uh, Medicare Advantage plans which is what I use because it gives me a little bit of dental benefits, which I can't get through the VA. So I'm just giving you my personal situation. So you're going to want to look at your plan. And what is it that, that you need to worry about? You know, do you have diabetes? Uh, are you, uh, do you need certain prescriptions? Because as those plans change, now the Advantage plans, they're getting a hell of a lot worse. You need to call your doctor. So if your doctor is in an Advantage plan right now, a lot of them are, are dropping that because they just can't make any money. I don't know why. There was a, I can't remember, the doctors were getting kickbacks on these Advantage plans and that's all being cut out of the budget. So they're saying, you know what, we're just not going to accept that anymore. So you want to call your doctor. Don't trust the uh, list that the government provides. You know, they, they can't do anything right. You got to make sure you call your doctor and say, look, this is the plan that I'm looking at. Are you still in this plan or are you going to be on this new plan that I'm looking at? And then they'll tell you, you know, and of course a dentist, same deal. All right, you know, you, Part A covers your hospital, so with 20% copay, which is huge. Um, anyway, so uh, the other thing that I want to point out to you is you got those Medicare supplement plans. Now, the advantage of those supplement plans is they allow you to go anywhere you want. All right, and most all doctors uh, accept those supplement plans. Now, that's going to cost you a monthly fee, from what I understand. But, you know, that is something that's going to give you the versatility and probably as better benefits than those Advantage plans. And with not being stuck in a network of doctors, you know, I'm going to tell you right now. I'll give you an example. I, my dentist is okay. I had to get a crown. Now, I had, I had a top-of-the-line dentist when I lived in Dearborn, Michigan. And I went in, and he had to do a crown... And I'm going to tell you what, he, uh, he gave me that nitrous oxide. Pretty much I, I was kind of laughing, having a good time. He went in there. He did that crown. It, I mean, he did it perfect. It was, it was incredible. Okay. And, uh, and so I, and I was, it wasn't an unpleasant experience at all. Now, my dentist is on my Advantage plan. And, and lot, very many dentists in my area accept that Advantage plan. So I just went, I just picked one out of the phone book. I mean, because I couldn't find anybody that could recommend a dentist. Oh my God, I had to get a crown. I went in, it was painful. They drilled and drilled and drilled and drilled. <clears throat> oh my God, I remember Bill Cosby. 
what I mean? I said, I was thinking, God, is this ever going to end? I mean, it went on and on. Of course, maybe it went on and on with the other dentist, but since I had the nitrous oxide, but see, you get what you pay for. The dentist that I got didn't have nitrous oxide. So anyway, I'm just, I'm just saying you might want to switch to a supplement, you know, or look at, uh, um, you know, other advantage plans. Cause I did notice a lot of my copays have gone up on my advantage plan which doesn't matter that much per se you know unless you're in a crisis like when i broke my neck i couldn't get the damn hospital to talk to the va and so i actually because i was desperate i actually signed some paperwork and let medicare pay for some of my my treatments well then i had the copay if they had just contacted the va that would have been covered 100 percent so you can see how you know you get into a desperate situation you might you might have to you know, use whatever you got. Anyway, that's just my advice. Now we're going to talk about the next portion of this video. All right, so we're going to get into. Well, actually, I'm going to go through my uh, my uh, uh, bookmarks, see if there's anything I want to add, and then we're going to finish off the video with a bunch of uh, stuff that, unless you're a geopolitical animal, you might not know about. A lot of this stuff is is old news. Okay. You know, if, if you're if you're following the geopolitical events like a bloodhound, like I do, you know these not, some of these were so old I, I didn't even include them. But some of them, you know, they happened within the last couple of months. So we're just going to kind of do a rundown on all the things you might want to know about. God, it's tough hiking through this. <laughs> Look at me, a turtle could pass me by on this stuff. All right, man. So let, let me go through the bookmarks and maybe we'll add something right here. Oh my goodness, you know, the reason why I hike this deep sand is for views like this. Look at that. Is that amazing? Yeah, it's, uh, it, adds a, it adds a good half an hour. And I, that was another tip I wanted to give you about your health. As I was listening to that medical doctor, and he says, one of the most important things you can do is get out and hike half hour to an hour, you know, two days a week. Folks, I think that's bad advice. You need more exercise than that. <laughs> I mean, come on. And of course, you need to add weightlifting into that puzzle also. You know, you should be out hiking two hours, at least three days a week. All right. Now, I don't I understand. I don't accept. I know you're not going to take it to the extremes that I do when I can, you know, like it is this time of the year. You know, but I, you know, I was caged like I felt like I was a caged animal when that hurricane came through. And uh, by the way, watch my previous, I never promote my videos, but boy, I did a good job on the previous video because I was telling you about housing and what your options are and, uh, you know, how, you know, how to, how to get your housing costs down, you know, what housing you might want to pick. You know, I, I, I didn't say it in that video, but I got to thinking about it. Let's say you got a son or daughter that has moved back home and they're driving you Bat shit crazy because <laughs> that's what they do right so that 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 uh, box home all right that i talked about in the previous video that uh, they're going to be producing you know uh, here shortly that th i'm talking about the 300 foot okay they can just bring it in so if you've got a big lot let's say you got a half an acre maybe an acre lot you know you could drop you know, of course, you got to have to grade the area. You can do it yourself or hire somebody to do it, flatten it out, maybe raise it up a little bit. You could drop that box home right in there and uh, and put your son or daughter or both <laughs> in, in that little box home. And they'll love it. Think about it. They got all their own privacy. They got their own TV. Uh, they can do whatever the hell they want. They got, you know, their, their, their bed space and everything. Now, granted, it's only 300 square. And plus, they can come to the main house anytime they want. If, you know, if they don't want to cook, they can come and join you and mommy, mama bear and papa bear and get some food. You know, I mean, so I just thought that would be a great solution for so many families. Because, you know, the kids today can't get jobs. You know, and as AI takes over, you know, more and more. I mean, I was seeing that new Tesla um, truck. And man, that, that could put a lot of truck drivers. Check out the cattle. Hopefully you can see them. That's another reason I walk along here because we get these beautiful views. But anyway, uh, you know, they're, they're going to have a tough time. You can't make a living on minimum wage, you know, especially with inflation. So better to, better to stick them in one of them box homes. And if you pay for it, you can always charge them a little bit of rent. Hopefully they can get out and do some uh, taxi cab service or whatever. I mean, I know 
Uber is just such a bad way to go because that's such a corrupt company and Lyft is too. But, uh, you know, there's other alternatives. Like in my case, I, I'm in a retirement community. I, at some point, I'm going to post my name on the board and, and say, I'm, I, you know, I'll be a taxi service and I'll offer hours of, uh, you know, when people can call. And they can call me instead of Uber. Now, what I got to do is I got to price everything out. Plus, I got other projects. You know, I want to I want to start putting some, together some pocket T-shirts and get my website up. Uh, I got everything I need. You know, I've got the website ready to go to get started working on it. And I got to slow down on these videos, but I enjoy making the videos so much. Plus, I got all this new camera equipment coming in. So I keep trying to improve the quality. All right, shut the, shut the hell up, that cybersecurity guy. And let's get to... The rundown. Anyway, I wanted to add to that medical. Another option that you've got is you can go in and pay somebody. And uh, I listen to, uh, I don't know, I don't, I don't like a lot of the things they say, but Zinnia Wealth, they were pretty, uh, pretty spot on about the Medicare stuff. So, you know, you could always go in and pay somebody to learn, you know, or, or you know, just discuss things. And that might be better than going to those luncheon seminars where you're getting a sales pitch because... You know, a, a, a business or a certified uh, uh, financial planner, you know, uh, they might, uh, they might, because they can present everything, you know, they're not just presenting their product. So that's, uh, that's something to think about. Oh, yeah, I always get, got to get my Democrat question of the day, because I know that some of you out there still have Democrat friends. So I want you to pose this question to them. So, do you think it's okay that FEMA is only giving American citizens, all those people who lost their houses and the ones that survived in North Carolina and Tennessee and Georgia and, you know, my God, even South Carolina, that they're only going to give them $750 and yet they're using the FEMA money, you know, $10,000 a month for illegal aliens or whatever it is. I mean, it's somewhere way the hell up there. I don't think that's right. I mean, so can you explain to me how you think that's right? And, and then, of course, if you really want to poke it in their eye, ask them the question, and do you think it's okay that we got 20 to 30 million illegal aliens in the country that we're paying for as taxpayers? You know, all right. I, and boy, if you wanted to add in the Ukraine war and <laughs> all the 2,000 pound bombs that were given to Israel like candy, you know, you could always add that in. But you don't, you don't want their head to split open. It, you know, it might, it might open up like a melon and then you have to look at their brain matter. And, it, you know, it could, be, it could look like something out of a horror movie. <laughs> but anyway, so I, I got to get the, I should put that on every video. The Democrat question of the day for people that have Democrat friends. All right. I did look through my bookmarks, and we're just going to add two more short ones. The um, first is uh, Robert Kennedy, uh, or Bobby Kennedy Jr., and he's talking about the WEF and how corrupt and evil that organization is. And, of course, the Democrats, you know, I think they have satanic worship parties where they, they all go to meet in these WEF rituals. God knows what takes place there. Can't even imagine. And uh, so we'll watch that video right now. Where do you stand on the WEF, the World Economic Forum? It's, it, it is like, you know, we shouldn't be paying any attention. It's a, it's a billionaire's boys club. It's arranging the world to shift wealth upward and, right. to, and to clamp down totalitarian controls on everybody else. And right. now they got the capacity to do it. They got all these countries running around doing what they tell them to do. It's astonishing to me that, you know, th these people go to Davos in their private jets. Yes. And they're able to tell these world leaders, you know, how to how to govern us in ways that eradicate our our constitutional and civil rights, and 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 constantly shifting wealth. I mean, COVID, we shifted four trillion dollars of wealth upward. We closed all the little guys. Yeah. And Home Depot Amazon was open, Rich but and Google, yeah. and, and they're all colluding with yeah. each other to censor the people who were like me who were complaining about it. Okay, and then the next one was a beautiful post. I'm going to put that up by Newt Gingrich, and he was talking about, you know, the nerve or the gall of uh, oh Barack Obama to go and lecture young black men <laughs> while he's living in his $2 million mansion at Martha's Vineyard. And most of these black men don't have two nickels to rub together. Some of them are homeless, 
You know, and they brought in all the illegal aliens to replace them, and the blacks aren't getting any money, but the illegal aliens are getting all the money. And yet, Barack Obama, Obama, uh, multi, I mean, good lordy, what does he have? I don't know how many millions of dollars he has. I just know that mansion at Martha's Vineyard. He's going to go in and lecture them on how they have to vote Democrat. <laughs> all right, to finish up today's video, let's just go through a couple of uh, X posts. So this is Ralph Nader. I encourage you, if you're on X, to follow him. Um, he said, isn't it about time for the media to call out Netanyahu, who every day is blowing up schools, refugee camps, apartment buildings, and UN relief facilities full of civilians, including many children by claiming there is a Hamas fighter here and there. Hamas fighters wear no uniforms. How would he know? If he does know, then he knows of the civilians, journalists, and aid workers there that he is blowing up to bits. Day after day, the media prints his unsubstantiated assertions, even though they know governments lie routinely during wars. I thought that was just a brilliant uh, rendition by Ralph Nader. So uh, I express my sentiments uh, completely. This is, uh, this is Dan Bongino. I thought this was a good, good post. Uh, when communist Democrats, <laughs> I agree with that, warmongering communist Marxist Democrats Dan Bongino uh, and their authoritarian media allies say something is misinformation that's code for the truth <laughs> folks there is no damn miss there's bad information there's plenty of bad information there is no misinformation and you have to sift through the information to get to the truth I keep saying that the moment they cry misinformation, you should immediately double down on your questioning because they're clearly hiding something. <laughs> These are old school communist tactics and you need to be ferociously fighting back against them. All right. So I, I thought that was just a brilliant uh, post by um, Dan Bongino. Uh, this is the uh, Kob Kobayashi letter. You can't make this up. And uh, he's given... A bunch of numbers here I thought that you might want to know. Core CPI inflation is now rising for the first time in 18 months. Headline PPI inflation is now rising for the first time since June. Last month's PPI inflation number was revised higher. Core PPI inflation is now up two straight months. Last month's core PPI inflation number was revised higher. How did the Fed just declare victory against inflation and I'll add in lower rates? How do you lower rates when inflation's this high? We're heading for a world of hurt, man. By the way, I want to tell you, uh, silver, I mean, I keep I keep expressing it. it. Right now, there's been a consolidation of silver mines. Now, two of the stock ticker symbols that I've given you in past videos were bought up by bigger companies. So I made a bit of money, uh, or currency, I guess you could say. Uh, not a whole lot. I mean, I'm sure if I followed... Uh, a Johnny Bravo swing trading course that I'd make a lot more money <laughs> than I do just I'm a buy and holder a buy and holder but I knew these silver mines would pay off in the long run and uh, so we are seeing a consolidation uh, who was it that was in important a ton of silver I want to say it was uh, Russia I believe Russia is buying up a huge amount of silver right now uh, we already knew China was and India certainly is so we're getting to some serious shortages on silver, and it's still only hovering around $20, $32 an ounce. So I'm not saying you should have gotten in when I told you around $27 or below. I mean, if you depending on how long you followed me, about a year ago, it was down and below 20 I think, at, at some one point this year. But anyway, let's just keep going with the news. I want to get to the top 10 if I can find it. Um, uh, top 10 global headlines you didn't hear about. And this is Alex... Barnacote, and uh, so I thought this was a good good stream Let's see. Uh, let's go through it Number 10 North Korea has sent troops to Russia to help them fight Ukraine. Now, I have no way of verifying this I haven't heard anything about that, but you know, I'm just reading you what he has to say uh, And he's actually got a video to back it up. So I'll uh, play it for you. It's very brief for the first time, North Korea is going to be sending troops to Russia to help them fight Ukraine. After Putin visited last week, North Korea has just announced that they will be sending troops to the Donbass region of Ukraine to help the Russian forces. The US has responded to this and they said they will be, quote, slaughtered. The US Department of Defense said, if I were a member of the North Korean military, I would question the wisdom of being sent to Ukraine to participate in an unlawful war in Eastern Europe. And it's worth noting that the US and most of NATO have already accused North 
North Korea of supplying weapons and ammunition to Russia. But for the first time, North Korea has officially announced their military support for Russia. And another first time, this will actually be the first time North Korea has ever sent troops outside of the Korean peninsula to fight a war. Now, the military units that are being sent are military engineering units, and they're going to be sent to the Donetsk region of Ukraine. Now, these troops are expected to arrive within just a month as well. But in doing this, it also shows that North Korea is not afraid of NATO or the US. And it also shows that North Korea has a much stronger military now than when they previously fought wars with the US. But if these troops arrive and they start doing things, then I'll definitely make a video on it. Uh, number nine, India has signed a 10 year deal with Iran to fund the building of Iran's largest shipping port. So uh, this will connect India to a Russian shipping lane, which the West has no control over. America is about to place sanctions onto India. They've been allies for a long time, except it seems they're about to become enemies. Yesterday, India signed a 10-year agreement with Iran, and Iran is America's enemy. The deal India signed with them says that India will fund the building of Iran's largest shipping port. Now, the reason for this is that that's about to create a whole new shipping lane across the world. For the last 150 years, the shipping lanes from Russia to India have been around Europe and through the Suez Canal. But with this new Iranian port, the shipping lanes won't even go through Europe. This means that the West will have zero control over the shipping lanes and therefore the ships that head through those shipping lanes. Meaning even if they wanted to, they wouldn't be able to place sanctions onto eastern cargo ships. So I'll explain how this new shipping lane is going to work. The cargo that would be on the ships will be travelling down all the way from Moscow down to Iran on trains. This is a new railway that they're building all the way from Moscow down down to the Chabahar port in Iran. That's the port that India has just funded the building of. And then from that port, the cargo ships will pick up the cargo that has come potentially from Moscow and they will take it straight to India. Now this railway and port is expected to be completed just within the next 12 months. And as soon as that happens, the West loses all control over the shipping lanes and the ships that head through them. And as I said at the start of the video, America is about to place sanctions onto India for funding this. The US State Department said anyone considering considering business deals with Iran needs to be aware of the risks that they are opening themselves up to and the potential risk of sanctions. India hasn't yet responded to the US threatening these sanctions, except it seems India doesn't even care. On top of India funding this, Uzbekistan, Afghanistan, Tajikistan and Turkmenistan are each funding it. And a lot more countries, including Russia and China, could potentially be funding this too. And so it seems that the West is quickly being isolated from the rest of the world. And the sanctions that the West imposes on these Eastern countries supporting this only drive those other countries further away from the West, which in the long run isn't very good for the West. This last part's important. I've been totally demonetized across all platforms now. So that means I can't make any money from any of this, even though I put hours into it every day. So that means I've now got to ask for your help. So if you want to help fund these videos, you can go to the link in my bio and you can join my Patreon. And that's going to help fund me so that I can put the time into researching for this and then making these videos for you. But if you can't afford it, that's totally fine. A follow I am just as grateful for. Uh, he's got a video for every one of these, so I'll just play them for you. The petrodollar has come to an end. This was one of the few things that backs up the US dollar. So this is massive news. I think we already knew about that. America has just been told to basically fuck off by Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia will no longer be selling oil in just US dollars. Instead, they will actually be trading in the Chinese yuan and the Russian ruble. Now, the reason for this is that Saudi Arabia has decided not to renew their 80-year petrodollar deal with the US. Since 1974, this petrodollar deal meant that Saudi Arabia was only allowed to sell their oil in US dollars. This petrodollar deal is one of the few big things that have been propping up the US dollar around the world. And with this deal over, it means a new currency could very easily take its place. And as you may know, it's possible that that new currency could be a BRICS currency. Members of BRICS, if you don't know, have announced the cryptocurrency blockchain based currency. And this is expected to be backed by gold, unlike the US dollar, which isn't really backed by anything. And since Saudi Arabia ended this petrodollar deal with the US just today, they have actually said that they could potentially sell their oil in crypto in the future. And so Saudi Arabia definitely seems to be shifting from the West more towards the East. So as you can probably imagine, this is a major blow to the US. And over the next few weeks and months, you could potentially see the US wanting to place sanctions onto Saudi Arabia simply just for doing this. But for some more news like this, you can just check out my other videos. 
Russian President Putin offered a peace deal to Ukraine, which has since been rejected. Yeah, we've talked about that. Israel has broken their treaty with Egypt. I did not know that. Uh, the UK will arrest Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu if the ICC issues an arrest warrant. Uh, that was interesting. The Houthis in Yemen hit Israel with a drone from over 2,000 kilometers away, which the Israeli Iron Dome air defense failed to intercept. Interesting. The Islamic resistance in Iraq attacked a U.S. military base in Syria, including U.S. soldiers. Germany attempted to shoot down an American drone, mistaking it for a Houthi drone. And the Houthis in Yemen hit Israel with a hypersonic missile for the first time. I didn't know that. I, I knew... Well, we just talked about the other stuff. Uh, let's see. Let's keep going. Uh, the Sam Sarmat 2 can hit the U.S. from the south. Let's watch that video. A substantial weight limit would be set aside for traditional missile defense, overcoming systems such as decoys. These are decoys that look like warheads, but carry no nuclear charge. They are needed to fool the missile defense system. The missile is able to overcome the missile defense system by giving the engines almost as much power as is needed to put the warheads into a circular orbit. The missile can attack the territory of the enemy country not by the shortest, but by any direction, including through the South Pole, bypassing the deployed missile defenses designed for the trajectories of conventional ICBMs launched from Eurasia through the North Pole, which would require the enemy country to costly deploy not fragmentary, but circular missile defense. The fact is that this is the first missile in the world that can strike the territory of a probable enemy through the South Pole. For NATO and Canada, this was an unpleasant surprise. The main missile defense force, the NORAD system, is designed to intercept missiles that are launched through the North Pole. On the southern side, the U.S. has no warning systems or missile defense systems. Therefore, U.S. satellites can detect a Sarmat launch, calculate its trajectory, but will not be able to defend themselves. Some of the missiles are based at a missile range in the Kaluga region. These are the so-called nuclear glades. According to the tests conducted, the time of approach of the missile to London will be about 8 minutes to New York, about 20 minutes. The range of firing Sarmat is 18,000 kilometers or more than 11,000 miles. This is enough to fly around the planet one and a half times. The maximum speed in the atmosphere is 17,982 kilometers per hour, or more than 11,000 miles. The exact number of warheads is classified, but there is information that the missile can carry on board up to 15 warheads with a power of 750 kT each. If that many landed on New York, it would look like this. Top headline. This is the one I wanted to get to. These are the top headlines according to Tara Bull. Now I don't know where Tara Bull gets. I think it's a she gets her stuff. But uh, let's let's read these. Uh, Univision accidentally broadcast proof that Kamala Harris used a teleprompter at her town hall. Who's telling her what to say? A lot of people are speculating on that. I'm not so sure. And do I really care? <laughs> I mean, I don't know. I don't know why it's such a big deal on X that she used a teleprompter. Al Trump uses a teleprompter, I, I believe. I, 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 I'm not. I'm sure he goes off script quite often, uh, which is something Kamala doesn't do for the most part. Uh, Hillary Clinton calls for social platforms like X to censor and monitor content, warning that if they don't, we'll lose total control. <laughs> that's what. It, yeah, yeah. That's uh, that's what censorship's all about. Authoritarian control. That's what a Democrat is. Oh my God. Elon Musk. Oh yeah. This is a big, big one going around on X. Uh, this this will be huge, and I will watch this for sure. Uh, Elon Musk says a Joe Rogan interview with Trump will happen before the election. Now that, you know, people are saying, well, that'll blow up the internet. Yeah, it certainly would. Uh, number four, former President Barack Obama says that the brothers aren't turning out for Kamala Harris like they did for him. <laughs> I don't know why people are worried about what Barack Obama's saying anyway, but, you know, whatever. Uh, Donald Trump extends his lead over Kamala Harris to 13 points on political betting platform Poly Market. Now, Everybody's talking about these betting platforms, and they're talking about polls. Folks, just, I, I, I sift through all that noise. I couldn't give a flying F about 
polls and bets and it's all meaningless garbage it's it's how much the democrats are going to be able to cheat on november uh, 4th or 5th which i forget which day it is uh, it could, might be if it's a tuesday anyway you know so you could you could poll to your blue in the face and the, and the people that are being honest uh, you know they probably have trump way ahead but if the democrats throw in a hundred thousand uh, ballots that they took to a nursing home and you know somebody's laying in a bed with an IV in them and, and can't even see the ballot and they fill it out for them and put it in a drop box because no signature matching's taking place <laughs> how are you going to defend against that right I mean, that's what the democrats do all right so let's just keep going i, I just wanted to get off on a tangent because i i hate all this crap i mean quit telling me about the damn polls i mean i, I, I there's people that i like to watch on youtube and uh Two-thirds of Americans support the deportation of illegal migrants, according to the Lapsos poll. Well, I, you know, okay, there's a poll I might pay attention to, but I can't believe Democrats would support the deportation of illegal immigrants. They, they need those votes so that they can get authoritarian control over the United States. So I, I find that hard to believe, but uh, anyway, maybe there are, there, there might be one or two intelligent Democrats out there. Uh, Tim Waltz calls for eliminating the Electoral College and switching to a national popular vote uh, while fundraising at Gavin Newsom's house. Now, you, we've talked about the Electoral College and why it's there, okay? You know, if you go by just popular vote, only the big cities are going to be able to elect anybody, okay? That the, the purpose of the Electoral vote was to give small states a voice, originally, a small states a voice in, in their representation, Okay, now it's it's even more so that, you know, a, a, a small concentration of a densely packed area can't override the vote of, you know, a vast area of people out in the rural areas. That's what the, it's all about. It was a smart way to do the election. And, that, and the fact that Democrats are calling for it to be abolished doesn't surprise me. They're also, believe it or not, they're not uh, for the Second Amendment. <laughs> <laughs> they want you to be subservient to them. They're going to take your guns. If you vote Democrat, you're not going to have a gun. And by the way, uh, you saw that clip on Chicago. You know, when, when people don't have guns, you know, think about it. I, I can't believe women vote against their own self-interest. Okay, young kid comes up. He's going to rob you. All right. Now, this is a small, petite female. And uh, he comes up. He can just grab her by the throat, jack her into the wall you know, beat the hell out of her and, and take whatever she's got. However, the equalizer for a woman against a, a, a buff man, I'm not talking about some drug addict, you know, although it could be a drug addict. <laughs> when she pulls that gun out and just says like that, okay, you know, like that, okay, that, that, that dude usually moves on. It's very rare that a woman actually has to shoot a robber that's coming at her or someone that's going to assault her or rape her. OK, so why in the hell women are voting Democrat so that, you know, their guns can be taken away and they can't defend themselves? Uh, it doesn't make sense. And, and that, that goes for men, too. I mean, elderly. All right. You know, I couldn't beat my way out of a wet paper bag. <laughs> 61 years old, man. If some young buck comes up and wants to rob me, I guarantee you I'll just have to give him whatever I got if I don't have a gun. Right. So the elderly vote against their own self-interest because they vote Democrat. See what I'm saying? All right. Let's keep going. Uh, RFK Jr. guarantees that the Trump administration will investigate the alarming rise of young people suffering uh, heart attacks. Yeah. Why are people having heart attacks? Now, I got to be real, real careful what I say on YouTube. Uh, so definitely watch The Burn on Rumble. But, uh, you know, there's other people that are talking about this, this rise in heart attacks. We don't know. We don't know why that's happening. Can't imagine. Uh, Elon Musk plans to cut almost 80% of the federal government while working with Trump. Who else thinks this needs to happen? <laughs> All right. Uh, if you appreciate the top 10, give please give me a follow. So I, I you know, I, I'll be clipping these. So terrible. And I, I, I love the top 10 that uh, he or she does. I, I think it might be a she. I'd have to go look at the profile. Uh, DD Geopolitics. Now, IDF reportedly strikes the same Beirut neighborhood hit on Thursday. So I had the other the other video. So yeah, I'll, I'll put this up. This is real brief, so you can watch that video. Max Blumenthal slams Western media for perpetrating the Israeli narrative based on lies. I'm not sure how long this video is. I, I might put it up. I might not. 
After October 7th, Israel needed to convince the Western public that it needed to do whatever was necessary, including things that we would consider unnatural. Therefore, it needed to exaggerate what took place on October 7th and to even lie about it, to portray it as the worst killing of Jews since the Holocaust, and in many ways, a second Holocaust. And so Israel fabricated atrocities about beheaded babies, babies being baked in ovens as though it were a Holocaust. And the Western media played along and created consensus for genocide. And even when these stories were debunked and even retracted, for example, by Joe Biden's own staff. The damage had already been, been done and it was too late. We never saw adequate coverage dedicated to the suffering of people in Gaza or even the killing of journalists. So the Western media has moved on now to Lebanon and you can see that in the New York Times, CNN, places like this, they're trumpeting Israel's quote unquote success in, for example, assassinating Hassan Nasrallah and other Hezbollah leaders. The pager attack, which wreaked terror across Lebanon and left thousands maimed and even children killed, was hailed as a great success. Can you imagine if Western media hailing anything clever, but also extremely deadly and violent that Hamas and Hezbollah did as a success? No, so it's very clear that they still hold some admiration for an Israeli military that is destroying Gaza and Lebanon all at once. Bombshell news. Slovakia is looking to ban the Pfizer and Moderna mRNA vaccines. A new government report uh, also concludes the COVID pandemic was an act of bioterrorism. The new Slovakian prime minister survived an assassination attempt after they rejected the WHO, World Health Organization, pandemic treaty. This is massive news coming out of Slovakia, and as usual, the mainstream media is barely reporting on this, so please share this everywhere. Remember how people were called crazy conspiracy theorists for questioning if the mRNA injections really were safe and effective, and for YouTube listeners, it's very safe and effective, okay? Very safe and effective. If you're a Democrat, get the booster to your 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 booster. And be sure and get it once a year with your flu shot, okay, if you're a Democrat. Because uh, it's, it's very safe and effective. Slovakia has appointed Peter Koltar as government commissioner investigating the COVID pandemic. And now this, rec his, this recommendations are in. And uh, I'll let you read the rest because I think I'm treading on thin ice <laughs> as far as YouTube goes. In fact, they're probably going to take this video down, but I don't know. I hope not. I don't think I've said anything wrong. Uh, do you? Uh, anyway. Uh, and then we'll get to one more and this will be it. The astounding round re reality the Western client media doesn't want you to hear. Ukraine has lost 600. And, yeah, I thought these numbers pretty staggering. Ukraine has lost 646 aircraft, 283 helicopters, 33,335 uh, 33, unmanned aerial vehicles, 582 anti-aircraft anti missile systems, 18,560 tanks and other armored fighting vehicles, 1,469 ML MLRS, multiple launch rocket systems, combat vehicles, 15,908 field artillery guns and mortars, and 27,098 units of support military vehicles. And he says 750,000 Ukrainian men have died. Uh, Russia continues to advance, but it's really more like about a million in my opinion. But uh, that's, you know, we're splitting. It's hard to know. You know, you get the numbers from the, the, the Russians and then you, the Ukrainians, uh, they'll say that only 10 people have died. <laughs> so, so you get these wild numbers. But, but from what I've seen, because I was watching the, the, the MOD, the Russian uh, military, uh, the um, Ministry of Defense. Uh, well, here's one more breaking. America will no longer support Israel. I, I can't verify this, but I, I've got a video here. Uh, this seems really bizarre to me, and I, I, and this is why I was I was telling uh, Trump supporters. Okay, Trump's come out and said he he wants to bomb, 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 bomb Iran, you know, and he's going to support Israel no matter what. Well, this sounds like the Democrats are trying to go after the Muslim vote, and they're going to say, okay, you know, we're going to take a more neutral stance 
on the Israeli question. And in fact, you know, if you watch the news, Biden is supposedly arguing with Netanyahu. But I'm just going to read this to you because if this is true, uh, this this is going to get the Democrats a lot of votes. And Trump's going to lose all those votes. So I think Trump needs to be a little more neutral on Israel. Okay. You know, he's supporting a genocide. And uh, that's not good. That's not good for because there's a lot of people that are paying attention, especially in the world right now. Maybe not in the United States, but a lot of people are paying attention to what's going on. So America will no longer support Israel in its attempt to ethnically cleanse and steal the Palestinian land. U.S. Ambassador to the United Nations, Linda Thomas, calls for a two for two resolutions to be met immediately. Resolution 2735 calls for an immediate ceasefire and handover of hostages. Israel must leave the Gaza territories and allow the reconstruction of Gaza. Resolution 2720 calls for the borders to be opened and fuel humanitarian aid to enter. America has previously voted against these resolutions. States is concerned by the situation in northern Gaza, including the announcement by Israel of a new evacuation order for several communities. We're particularly concerned that Palestinian civilians have nowhere safe to go. Already there are devastating reports of the squalid conditions in the humanitarian zone in southern and central Gaza, where more than 1.5 million displaced civilians have fled. These catastrophic conditions were predicted months ago and yet have still not been addressed. That must change. And now we call on Israel to take urgent steps to do so. Consistent with Resolution 2735, there must be no demographic or territorial change in the Gaza Strip, including any actions that reduce the territory of Gaza. We're also concerned by recent action by the Israeli government to limit the delivery of goods into Gaza. All parties must meet their responsibilities under Resolution 2720. And we'll finish the video right there. But, uh, I, you know, it, it's not going to do no damn good. I mean, the Israelis have literally destroyed everything. You know, one of the things that, that I just want to talk for just two, two more seconds. It's going to be a long video. You know, I don't understand why the Israelis blow everything up. You know, why not, if you're going to do an extermination or a genocide, why not just go in and shoot the people in the house? And then you could have your settlers, your Israeli settlers, just move into the house. If you blow up the house, it, you know, I don't understand why they need to, to I, I understand they don't want the Palestinians moving back into these areas, but you're not, they don't want them there anyway. They're, they're going to make sure they're either all dead or they're all pushed out into Egypt or, or Jordan or where, whoever, you know, I mean, they're definitely not going to be left in Gaza. So why destroy everything including and this is also in in lebanon or even in the west bank or wherever you know all the fighting that's taking place the israelis go in and you know i mean think about it if if remember the british back in the revolutionary war and they would just kick the people well, a lot of times they just took over the house now i don't know if they shot them i, I think they just you know house their soldiers there and put the people in the barn <laughs> i mean i don't i don't know i mean I, did they shoot them somebody tell me i haven't read that about that in history but i mean so the british didn't destroy the houses they used them to house their soldiers you know so i i i don't know that's just a little thing that bugs me all right peace out stay free all right i don't know if you can see it but there's a turtle right there Scared the hell out of me. I said, man, he makes a lot of noise going through there. I was like, what the hell is over in those weeds? But then look down here. Oh, damn it. It's gone. There was a deer down there. Anyway, at least we got the turtle. This is why I like being out here in the evening. See, there's no dew on the ground. And the temperature is just perfect. It's probably about 78 degrees. But that's the view that I get walking along here. Hopefully this time of the night we should get some deer. I'm going to keep it on, but it's getting dark on me. Okay, you might be able to see it a little better now. I'm probably going to have to break this up into two videos. I talked for way too long, but there's so much information that I want to get to you. Isn't that cool?